We've already discussed the fact that atoms that do not have a filled valence shell are reactive. So now we're going to look at one of the ways that some atoms can react to get a more stable valence shell. And one mechanism that some atoms utilize is gaining or losing electrons to get a more stable valence shell. So if an atom gains electron, it gets an overall negative charge, and if it loses an electron, it gets an overall positive charge. And an ion is any species that has an unequal number of protons or electrons. And these charges really impact, the charges of the ions really impact their properties. So we care a lot about whether something has a charge or not. So let's take a look at the lithium atom. Lithium is in group 1A and it's in the second period. So it has one valence electron and that valence electron is in the second shell. If that lithium atom loses an electron, which is actually pretty easy for it to do, it now has a filled shell, has its valence shell. It also has an overall charge because it lost an electron, and for every electron that an atom loses, its charge becomes more positive by one. So since lithium lost one electron, it is a charge of positive one. And we see that pattern for every metal of group 1A. They all have one valence electron that once they lose, they become much more stable. So every member of group 1A um, tends to lose electrons, and the metals always lose one electron to form a positive one charge. Now, on the other side of the periodic table, if we look at the nonmetals, they are just a few electrons shy of getting a filled valence shell. So for example, oxygen has six valence electrons. It just needs two more to get a filled shell of eight. Fluorine, seven valence electrons. It only needs one more to get eight valence electrons. So nonmetals tend to gain electrons to form negatively charged ions. So if we look at oxygen, as we saw it's in family 6A, it has six valence electrons in the second shell, because oxygen is in the second period. When that oxygen atom gains two electrons, it gets eight valence electrons in that second shell, and that's a stable configuration. So it gets a stable configuration and also has an overall charge of negative two. Anytime an atom gains an electron, its charge becomes more negative for each electron it gains. So if oxygen gains two electrons, its overall charge is negative two. So this slide sums up some of the charges that you'll be expected to predict. Elements in group 1A always lose one electron to form a charge of positive one. Group 2A always lose two electrons to form a charge of positive two. Elements in group 6A gain two electrons to get a charge of overall charge of negative two and elements in 7a gain one electron to form, have an overall charge of negative one. Now I do want to point out something about group 6a. As we go down group 6a there are actually some metals here and metals don't gain electrons. So we're only looking at the nonmetals and the metalloid tellurium for the members of group A that gain two electrons to form a minus two charge.